Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we're taking a look at an update that is currently available with Magica CSG. Magica CSG from the folks at FTracy is a lightweight sign distance field editor and a path tracing renderer. So we've already talked about how this tool works. We've talked about the whole idea, how you can work with sign distance field. I'm also gonna go ahead and put a link in the description that can bring you right here where you can download this. And of course, if you want to read more about the sign distance field, you can do well to check it out. So we've talked about a lot of things about this one and how the whole UI works works but right now there is two updates that's currently available with it which we're going to go ahead and check out so once you go ahead and download the tool you would notice that there are two updates so one of the updates is uh, basically with the ui is the fact that the fonts for the ui are a bit more bold so i think they went ahead to just increase the font a little bit more so you can notice that right here with what we have and then the second thing is right now if you go over to the show io which is input and output you can now export your meshes so we've already talked about how the sign distance field tool works before so just to recap if you are trying to create stuff let's go over to where we have our outliner you can choose to create stuff based of layers and the models that you work with are actually considered a stroke so if we hold down shift click and drag we can make a copy and this copy can be changed to a sphere and then you can connect the sphere with the other object or you simply move it in and automatically it is going to merge. Now, if you're trying to make some blendings, you can now click on the blend section and actually blend and create some very interesting things. Now, there are certain Boolean operations that you can also do with this, like union, intersection, subtract, replace, and you can choose to also play with the color. And, you know, once you start blending, the color also blends alongside. So this is a very beautiful tool for those who like to create some sort of organic looking models. And this doesn't stop here because to every single stroke or every single stroke type that you have here, which are actually the primitive shapes that you have right here, they all have different things that you can do with them. So right now you can go in to throw a bit of a hole in there. You can make this to have a bevel and you can actually do some nice stuff. If you're trying to render this, you can hit the render button and do all of that rendering stuff. So we've already covered this one a bit more extensive in a different video altogether. So I'm just gonna put a link in the description where you can check this one out. So the second cool thing here is for you to get these to another app. Let's say you are working with ZBrush, let's say you're working with Blender, or maybe you're working with any other app and you like to get this model from here over to another app just to work with it and actually do some nicer and creative things with it. Right now, you can go over to where you have the show IO, which is input output, and directly now you'd notice we have the mesh. Now, within the mesh, if you click on export, you can now export these as a PLY file. So, in this case, we're just going to go over and call this one and then hit the save button to save this. And with that saved, let's go ahead and launch Blender. So, we have Blender right here. I'm just going to go ahead and delete this. And if you go over to file, go over to import, you would notice that we have the Stanford PLY file import option, which we can now use to import these files in. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind with the files that you'll be creating with the Magica CSG are, first off, they are not created within the origin point of your viewport or of your world. And another thing is the size system there is a little bit different from other apps as you would notice. So right now we've imported this file and you cannot see it. So how you get to see it is by tapping the period key and you can now notice how crazy big that is. So let's just go ahead and take a look at that. Press S on the keyboard to scale this one down and then I'm just gonna press the period key to zoom right there. Now, in this case, I would also want the 3D cursor to be exactly here. I hold on shift and right click to get the 3D cursor right there. Then go over to object, go all the way to where we have set origin and then set the origin to the 3D cursor. So what this will do is right now, this is going to be your origin point. So we can now use that to put that where we would like it to be. If we want it down there, down all the way here, and you can see this beauty. So this is how cool it is and uh, this is how easy it is for you to bring it. Now, something else which you'd also notice once you bring a file like this is if you switch over to EV or Cycles, you would not be able to see the textures. So let's scale this down a little bit more and take a look at that. Okay, and then we would make a couple of copies. Let's also bring this a little bit lower. Okay, so you would notice that we cannot see the colors. Now, the reason is Magica CSG actually saves these colors as vertex colors. So that simply means for you to be able to see this, you need to go over to the vertex color section and you will notice that we have an attribute right here that deals with the color. And to have this visible on the viewport, you need to go over to shading. And at this point, we're going to add a brand new material, then click on add, go over to input, and then click on attribute. Right now, once you have this, we can now type in the attribute that we have, which is 
color and then connect this right over there and of course this is also how you get to bring in every other file that you already had here so there is a couple of examples that you can play with like the splatoon is also a very good example to actually look at so this one looks really really cool so let's go ahead and rotate around it so this one looks very very cool and you can also import this over to blender and like i mentioned earlier the files that you'll be getting out of these are extremely heavy in terms of geometry count so for a file like this this might end up being about five six million now the next question that most of you guys might be asking is how can you get this out or can you also import this in a different app altogether yes you can so right now what we're going to take a look at is how you can work with this in a different app and in this case we're looking at zbrush so once you export this it's very beautiful to note that ZBrush also allows import of PLY files so you can actually import this PLY files and to do that all you need to do is just go over to the import section click on the import and then you would be able to click right here and you would notice that PLY Stanford PLY files are actually supported so once you click on the file you can now import this right here you can tell that the polygon count for this file is extremely heavy so we're looking at 9.5 million polygon points and for those who will be asking what about the colors how do the colors actually appear in ZBrush so for ZBrush once you're working with a file like this and you simply import it the colors comes in alongside so like I mentioned earlier as well the colors are vertex based and zebra should treat this vertex based colors as poly paints and the another thing which you'd notice once you bring this directly into ZBrush is that at this point we are looking at the object upside down okay so for you to actually get a good orientation if we move to the side view that looks good if we move to the back you would notice that it automatically looks that way so for you to get this you know within its right point you would have to snap this to an angle like that and then you will be able to get it looking really really good and of course this is for those who are thinking about getting their files or actually getting organic shapes from magical csg over to zbrush and of course afterwards you can now hit this out send it over to tools like keyshot and start doing some very cool rendering with it and that's about it for those who like to take a look at this link is going to be in the description and for sure you can jump on twitter and start seeing some amazing stuff that some creators have actually started using Magicka CSG alongside Blender and also other 3D apps like Unreal Engine 5 to create. So you might want to go ahead and check it out. Use the hashtag Magicka CSG to check out some of these beautiful things. And you might want to grab this one. Tell me what you guys think about this in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And if you're new here, it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on the notification so that you don't miss next video or the next update. And I'd like to see you guys again with your tutorial update. Free Friday, tutorial Tuesday, tips and tricks, things like this. Peace.